is Brent Central Arkansas. Today I'm going to talk about my biggest fear. <laughs> and I'm going to use gardening to help me with it, or attempt to help me with it. Diabetes. I'm a type 2 diabetic, and I my numbers are not great at all. My last A1C, if you're a diabetic, you know what I'm talking about, was 8.2, and it's ever so slightly rising. I don't think I've ever had it under 7 in more than 10 years now. And ideally, you want to be like 6.2 and under. After 6.2, you become pre-diabetic, I believe the numbers are. It doesn't really matter. The reason why I'm doing these videos, I've got three videos coming up. There's going to be one of, part one of three is about to come out. Is I'm going to attempt to use um, fenugreek in three different ways to combat diabetes. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'll show you some of the literature, some of the research I've done in the video. And I'm going to attack it from three different angles. I'm going to use seed itself. I'm going to grind the seed up. I'm going to use sprouts. Um, and I'm going to dehydrate those sprouts. sprouts. That's going to be the first video. It's going to cover the grinding of the seeds, the growing of the sprouts, and the dehydrating of the sprouts, along with grinding those sprouts to make a powder. Uh, dehydrated powder from those two things and the, th the second video is going to be about microgreens growing fenugreek microgreens because uh, benefit it's been said that fenugreek is beneficial in all three stages so I'm going to grow the leaves and that means microgreens to true leaf stage and that's what the second video is going to be about and then the third video which is going to take some time I'm gathering statistics of all my blood work. The third video is going to be post all of this where I take it daily. And then I'll even show you how I'm taking it. So that's what this video is about. It's going to be three parts to it. This intro will be in all three parts. And I will share those videos as I go. I'm in my bathroom and I've got uh, the fixings for two different types of grows. First, let me tell you about the seed. I get the seed in bulk. It's in my store. Um, whichever one I'm using uh, will always be listed under microgreens in the store. Um, and so that may vary from time to time depending on price. But I didn't get these from a seed store. Um, I got them from, well, it'll be in the store. Anyway, so I've got my scale here. I'm going to measure out two different ways, two different styles of grow. I've got two here that are yellow topped. They're going to be sprouting. I'm going to grow friendly Greek to the sprout stage. And then I'm going to dehydrate it and use it. And in this one, I'm going to grow them to get as much true leaves as I can, like I do just, it is microgreens, microgreens level. Uh, and true leaf form and I'm going to grow them. I'm going to do the soak for them in the green one and I'm going to do the soak for the sprouting in the yellow ones. So I've got my cup here. I'm going to zero it out on the scale here and then I'll show you how much that I'm adding to each one. Alright, you see there it's one pound. One pound is going to be split between these two sprouting jars. Let's see how much that equals to here. 454 grams. 16 ounces even, obviously. So I'm going to put these in there and we're going to add some warm water. When you go to soak seeds, you want to soak them in warm water and you want to rinse them throughout this soaking process. Now we're only going to soak these for 12 hours and periodically I'm going to rinse these off. I'm going to pour it up, turn it upside down, let it drain. I'm going to fill it back up with warm water. So how do you know what warm water level um, is appropriate for germinating seeds? 
and um, we're not trying to kill off anything, any bacteria or funguses or anything like that. We're just trying to get the water to seep into the seed more. So all I'm doing is I'm turning on tap water. I turn it to hot till it gets nice and hot. And then I move it over to the cold side until it feels um, a cold side of warm, if that makes sense. It means I can feel that it's warm with my body temperature being 98.6. That means to me that if it feels warm, it's going to be above 98.6. And that's, that's my thought process. I don't know if it's actually factually true. But that's what I went with. And what I'm finding here is, let me show you here push hold on this that that temperature range is 102.2 so when I feel it feeling a little bit warm and then I don't go any hotter then it's about 102 and that is just perfect I want it to not kill the seed but I also want it to absorb into the seed longer so we're going to soak it for 12 hours and throughout that 12 hours I'm going to pour off the water to drain out any particulates and discolored water and rinse it with fresh warm water. And I'm going to do it for 12 hours and then lay them into the trays for growth. These things have soaked for 12 hours and it's time to get them on the tray. Now the shorter one here, as you probably realized uh, from <laughs> the watching the video just now, it was yesterday for me. Anyway, um, this one is for a grow. This one's going to be microgreens, and that's what this tray is going to be holding. We're going to grow these to true leaf level. And the ones in the back, look how much they swell up from seeds from what they were, filled the jar completely. Another thing is to consider whenever you pack seed like this, you need to, when you rinse it, jostle the seed all the way to the bottom because it'll absolutely lock in place uh, and you'd have to dig it out but anyway that is the seed it has a whole lot of seed and all we're going to do with that seed is sprout it so i'll bring you back as we grow this particular seed back here is we're only growing to the sprouting stage so you can see back here how thick that is that i mean i am growing it really thick and that's because i don't want to waste resources the whole point of this particular grow is to get a whole lot of sprouting seed and I think I can do it really well in one tray but I'll bring you back as we grow. This particular one in the front we're growing to true leaf stage so it's going to get the standard stuff I use, the assembly as I call it in the book, it's going to get all the parts and pieces to, to, to do that grow and that includes the cover and the weight and a blackout dome. Check out these sprouts now, how much they've lifted. These are ready. I'll take these in. It's only been grown in water and it was rinsed and all that. It should be really clean, but I'm going to do another rinse and then we're going to get a weight and dehydrate them. Because this tray has a mesh bottom, I can rinse it. Rinse the sprouts right in the tray. I'm going to drain right into the sink. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let them drain for a little bit. And again, this had nothing but water to sprout. And the seed was clean. So, they're pretty clean already. Here's my scale. And this is how I usually weigh microgreens. And I use a cup to raise the tub. So let me turn this on. It's set to grams. We'll put the cup on. And then we'll put the empty tray, tub, container, whatever, on top. And then we're going to zero it out. Now I'm going to take the tub and add the sprouts to it. And we're going to get a weight. That'll just have the weight of only the sprouts. I've got the sprouts here. They're pretty heavy. I'll put them on here. Get them to balance there. Son of a... Alright, it took a little bit too long and so the scale went off. 
but I think it was, um, well, it's in the video how much it was. So subtract that from that. The weight of the, mic uh, the sprouts, this is how I grow microgreens to exactly, except I just got them really immature here at sprout stage. But um, yeah, let's uh, get a, that is 75.65 ounces or 4.7 pounds. I'll put how much the seed was starting and this is what it ended up being. So we'll take off the weight of the tub, whatever it was too, and I'll put it here in the video. So this is what the screen and tray looks like after getting the microbes in the sink, obviously, a disposal site so I can get rid of the mess. But it's really easy to get these off by just scraping with your fingers. But I wanted to bring you in close here so you can see the screen. Um, as always, the way I grow, as I outline in the book, there's never any mold. Never any mold, never any disease. It's always always pristine and beautiful and this particular screen is food grade screen this is my preferred screen now one of the things I don't talk about much and I should talk about it more it ensures success and that is washing and sterilizing everything you grow in I grow in what's called the assembly which is a few more parts than what I'm showing here but I keep everything washed I wash it and dawn and then or dishwashing liquid and then I sterilize it with a bleach solution like bleach solution and rinse um, this is the tray and the screen and the bottom 1020 and so I put the screen here and then the tray on top of it to keep the screen flat uh, for next use but it's very very important that you grow in a sterile environment that keeps disease out it allows me to grow super super densely and not have any disease or fungal issues at all. So the majority of the grow, in this case, 100% of the grow was in a sterile environment more or less. It was under the dome, covered where things can't get in. And when I grow microgreens, it's pretty much the same thing until I uncover them and let the microgreens green up. Uh, but at that time, they're pretty well established and have a great root system. So that's, that is probably the key, besides one other element that I talk about in the book, but that's probably the key to making uh, how I grow a success hydroponically. This is the seed. It's the, one of the three parts of fenugreek I'm growing. I'm going to grind this into a powder. I'm going to dehydrate the sprouts and grind them into a powder, and then I'm going to take the microgreens that are, going to, that are growing out there now once they leaf out well and then I'm going to dehydrate those along with the roots and I'm going to grind them up to make a three-part powder um, because they tout the benefits of seed, uh, sprouts, and the leaves. So I'm going to do all three. So right now I've got a cup on here. It zeroed out and just for the record I just want to show you that I'm going to do um, well it's going to be one pound of uh, There we go. One pound of seed. Now I'm going to rinse this thoroughly and I'm going to dehydrate these along with the sprouts so that I'll make sure the seed is clean and um, the, hopefully the dehydration will also kill off any potential issues that may be in the seed itself. Here's the dehydrator I'm setting up. The seeds are all on the bottom tray and I've got four trays stacked very thickly for the sprouts. So now let's dehydrate these things. This is the dehydrated sprouts. And these are the seeds that I ran while I was dehydrating the sprouts. Just to kill off any potential disease that may be within the seed. Probably not any. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this seed. We know it is a pre-weight of a pound. I need to know how much the powder weighs compared to the seed before it was a pound so that I'll know how much to add to my oatmeal or whatever else I eat. So typically um, you soak these, you, you take uh, 15 grams, or that's what I did and is suggested in many places, 15 grams of seed 
you soak it and you eat 15 grams. So that's what I need to determine how much 15 grams of dried powder is. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to take this seed, put it in a blender and grind it up. Post mix, post blend, whatever. It's a little fluffier. I can fit um, all of it into one cup. So we're going to do a two cup way. So I'm going to take two cups here and I'm going to zero it out. And I'll take these and I'll put them on top of each other. And there you go. So there's no, uh, there's no difference. This is basically the same exact weight post blend as it is uh, seed. I emptied the dehydrator trays into this container here, and this is all of the four trays worth of uh, dehydrated sprouts, and that's what dehydrated sprouts look like. I'm going to stuff those into the blender here, same one I use for the seeds, and I'm going to blend that down and see how much we get. This is what we got out of the sprouts, ground up just like we ground up the seeds. And let's get a weight on. We started out with one pound of seed. It got over four. I don't know exactly how much. I haven't figured it out yet because I haven't gotten to editing. But by now I've put it on the screen in the video for you so you've seen it. But it was over four pounds I'm quite certain. And it reduced back down after drying and grinding to what you see there. Under a pound, pretty close to a pound still. So that's a good thing. So using my scale I took half of the ground seed and put it in each jar and then I put half of the ground sprouts and I put it in each jar. This one I mixed already but the reason why I did this is I wanted you to see the texture difference. On top is the ground seed. It looks a little bit more coarse and the bottom is uh, the ground sprouts and uh, that makes sense you know. Anyway. Next we need to finish the grow and we'll add the third and final component, the leaves and stems of grown fenugreek.